Chiefs minicamp is rolling on, but where is Frank Clark? Who's standing out? Who's missing in action? And who do we have to talk about? Actually realizing what happened last season might not feed in this season. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked on Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, friends and neighbors. This is Locked on Chiefs, part of Locked on Podcast podcast of the world for the audio side we're brought to you by blue nile you want to check them out because you get 50 dollars off of a 500 dollars purchase today with the code locked on at blue now.com for fine jewelry and your special moments we're going to get into what is and more importantly what isn't happening at otas uh the sorry the mandatory mini camp that concludes otas Right now, I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting at RogueAPC.com, as well as your team building efforts over at NFL33.com. You can check out RGR and you can check out all kinds of stuff. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm actually excited we get closer and closer to actually having almost football talk that we get to talk about. I'm Chris Clark, founder of Chiefs Corner. You can find me though over there at Chiefs Corner. Send me all your salary cap questions, statistics, analytics, that kind of thing. That is what I'm going to be getting into even more. Uh you know, I guess we'll start here. Where is Frank Clark? We did find out where he is. He's not there on Wednesday. Be curious to see if he shows up in the next couple of days. If his child was born or not, he was excused because he haven't he hasn't birth in the fa- coming in the family. And right. to me, I'm okay with that. He knows the system. He knows what's going on. He knows what they're going to do. And actually, this works in Kansas City's favor because it gives reps to the young guys. So it actually helps them. Well, the language of what I saw. Um, from multiple sources, that he's been excused for mandatory camp. So that tells me yeah. they're not expecting him at all. And I, I agree with you. I think that's – obviously, it's a good reason. But it's also a whole lot better than what we had yesterday in that he was just miraculously excused. We had no idea why. We had no concept of of is this some bigger implement, uh, implication of what is or isn't going on with his game and how he's fitting in with this this new front that has to remake itself, it, itself in, in several ways. Yeah, and I'm okay with, like I said, I'm okay with him missing it for the birth of a child. I mean, I think that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Uh, you know, you're going to be looking at, you know, players across the league have missed games at times for the birth of the child. So missing a mini camp, and it, you know, if he was a new player in a new city with a new team, maybe it becomes more of an issue. But it's not, and he's a veteran, so he kind of knows where he needs to be. The only bad thing about it is they're not going to know what kind of shape he's in until he gets to training camp. So there's that, but. There is that. <laughs> yeah. But he's, he, like I said, he's professional. He's known w- before what he needs to do to be able to be in shape. If he's going to show up in shape, then great. Uh, we'll find out when it comes to training camp. Yeah, I, I think so. And he's, he's not, <laughs> he's not out there on his own. Uh, there are plenty of guys that are not in camp. The, the list is quite long today. So let's run it down real quick. There is Frank, who's excused. But Orlando Brown, obviously, with the contract issue still not out there. Blake Bell. Because he's not under contract, to be right. close, to be clear. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Contract yeah. issue, meaning there isn't one. But yeah, okay. Right. Um, Malik Herring didn't practice today. Had a good OTA session. Something happened, and I don't have any injury-specific information, but he was held out today. Blake Bell was out. Uh, Rashad Fenton was out. We knew that was coming because of the shoulder recovery. Trent McDuffie left the field on day one and did not return today. Now, they said that it was precautionary, but he's he's a key element in what is going on this camp and, most important, in August for camp. And I'm, I'm fine that they're holding him out because they have to be super cautious with him. He's a guy that, in my estimation, should play 70% of the snaps this coming season, and they have to take care of him. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And I think that that's concerning that he wasn't there, but at the same time, He's at least gotten all the reps with the OTAs. He's got a good idea of where they are. Uh, he may not be on the field, but I'm sure he's doing his studying. I'm sure he's he's taking care of that aspect of it. And really the reality is, is, is you don't want to have him risk tweaking something and being out into the season or even into training camp. If this is going to be something that can be you know healed up in the next couple of weeks, he'll be fine for training camp and he'll be able to get back on track. Yeah, agreed. And – I, I sure I sure hope so because I think they need him maybe more than the other rookies. Even though they need Karloftis a lot for the pass rush, like he's got to be able to perform a, at a a rookie plus level. I'm not going to say he should perform like a veteran, but he's a guy that I think is more key than they've led on to this point 
because of how much they're moving him around. We, we talked with Matt yesterday, and it's not just lining up outside, although that that is where Matt Derrick thinks he will end up starting. But he's also taking nickel reps as well. And that allows you to have, A, a an immediate on-field fallback if Legereus has to miss snaps. But it also allows you the mix and match of, is Legereus going to be in the nickel? Is, is Trent going to be in, in the nickel? Can you can you take advantage of that by getting the mismatch that you want? And I think that's going to be key as Spagnuolo has to kind of retool the way that he goes about his secondary. Yep, and I think that's going to be a big key. I do think that it's having multiple guys that can run into that position and play that position gives you the ability to match up against whoever comes into the slot and whoever is going to be that guy that they're going to be going against. And you, know, you look at the safety group, there could be times when some one of the safeties comes down and plays that position as well. Yeah. You know, we have a lot to talk about on the offensive side, too, because there's a new addition. There's a couple of missing players that we need to talk about. Two guys that are there but not working is Lucas Niang. We're going to cover his replacement as well. And Joshua Williams, who is still out, went out also on day one. And then we got to cover Chris Jones and where he's at with his positional play and what he's looking for. Had some interesting comments. We're going to get into all of that after we go over and, and tell you, you know, it's a coming holiday is always, you know, fun. But there are things that you have to do to make them special. And those moments don't always come along. You have to take advantage when you can. And at BlueNow.com, you can celebrate life's moments, whether it's an engagement or just a, a huge life-spanning moment there, an anniversary or something like a graduation, something really, really special that you want a fine piece of jewelry that fights at a price that you can't get at any other jeweler. And you want it to be specific. You want to be custom. You can do that as well. For whatever milestone it is you're celebrating, you can design a custom engagement ring or any other piece over at BlueNile.com. They make it yours and you make it theirs for all your special moments. And by doing that, you need expert help and they're available for you 24-7 to get you what you need for your special person. You can make that moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com. And our fans right now, our listeners are getting $50 off of a $500 purchase no matter what. It's a podcast exclusive, but you got to use the code Locked On when you go to BlueNile.com. That's Locked On, plus every order comes insured, it ships free, and it ships in packaging that is discreet, to say the least. It's the best way to go. It's stress-free for you, and you get to make an impression with your forever piece. Go to BlueNile.com today. Now, the talk of the town, the talk of the fan base, the talk of everything has been what a steal – they got in Justin Ross. He made some plays in OTAs. He was looking like he was coming along. And then the last day of OTAs, something happened. Uh, I, I don't have it confirmed, but I'm understanding it that it's a soft tissue issue, uh, possibly a hamstring, that is just holding him out, and they're being cautious and keeping him out. But this is this is a disappointment because last week as the week was ending, I was talking about, you know, he's a guy that has a chance to really solidify his opportunity for training camp by having a good mini camp. And this is where you earn reps in training camp by making an impression. If he's not able to be out there, I think that that hurts a little bit. I don't think it, it stops his development, but I think it may delay when we see him play meaningful snaps in camp. Could. It also is going to be leading people to question whether or not he's going to be able to play in the NFL. I, yeah. I'm not trying to jump off a cliff here, but – the reality is, is that he dealt with a lot of injuries in college and we're not even in a place where they can be hit right now. And he's he's having a soft tissue injury and that is problematic for a wide receiver. So obviously try to get it taken care of. Hopefully it doesn't flare back up, but getting it before you even get the pads on and doing that kind of stuff, you have to question whether or not he's going to continue to be able to stay healthy. And, and that's something we're going to have to watch. Yeah, I, I think they're going to have to watch it all offseason. And this is, two days straight is starting to be a, a bit of a concern. Now, Sky Moore is back out there after having uh, been held out in OTAs for a hamstring, and he's wearing a sleeve. He looks pretty snappy to me. I've seen a little bit of footage of him. Um, and so I think that that's a plus. But it doesn't necessarily make up for it. You want both these guys competing and jumping into the fire. So if, if they can get him healthy for camp at the end of the day, it may, like I said, it may slow him down, but it's not going to change everything for you. But a couple other guys, uh, Prince Tego Wanago, a, a guy that a lot of fans want to see get a shot as the backup tackle, is not able to practice. As I understand, Christian is getting some reps there. Kennard is getting some reps there. Uh, there's a lot of back and forth. Andrew Wiley's getting reps. That's what Matt told us yesterday. So um, it doesn't look like Tego Wanago's like in the mix right now. 
but we've seen things change rather abruptly like they did last OTAs in minicamp heading into training camp. It was, it was a different lineup. Yeah. And training camp, you're really going to see a lot more when it gets to, you know, the pads come on, you're able to see what linemen are able to do. So if he's able to get back for training camp and he's able to start practicing the, you know, when training camp starts, maybe he's able to get himself in position to be able to do things. Um, yeah. You know, when you, when you put the pads on and you get to start hitting people, that's when it's really going to matter uh, for those offensive linemen. So uh, it stinks that he's not out there and he's been a guy that they've had for a couple of years now on the practice squad. So it's something to watch. And one guy uh, that has been there is Willie Gay Jr. Bringing the energy. I like that. He talks about, you know, understanding that he and Nick Bolton are now a pair. He's practicing. He's getting through there. It seems that a lot of the running backs are excited about Jarek McKinnon's return. He's not out there practicing yet. Uh, I believe that he's slated for tomorrow, and there's got to be a contract signing and all that to actually, you know, ink it. But uh, those two guys, uh, I, I put them together, one practicing and one not, because Willie brings – energy to the defense and I thought McKinnon brought energy to the offense late in the season and those are two things that I think right now you want to see from nearly everyone but if you don't have your energizer bunnies out there I think it slows down the tempo of practice and the quality of practice for everyone no it's definitely going to and I think it's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out with McKinnon coming back is he able to secure a roster spot I mean we've been talking about Pacheco being able to guy be a guy that can do ret return kicks What's that do with the other running backs? You know, Derek Gore was on this roster last year. They seemed to really like him. Ronald Jones is here. Clyde's here. I mean, you can't keep five running backs. No. Plus a fullback. But plus four one. tight ends. Yeah, you could trade one, and maybe that's what it, they end up doing. But it's still just interesting that they're going to go that direction. Yeah, I agree. Like, were you surprised by the signing? You didn't get to react yesterday with me and Matt. No, I was. I am a little surprised by it just because it looked like they had a room that they probably liked or I thought that they liked because you bring in a running back. You've got another one in Ely who we, have, we haven't even mentioned uh, is a you know, UDFA that's, that a lot of people are very high on. So we'll see whether or not he's able to do anything to get him so his name in there at all. But a lot of questions and you start looking at the running back depth and going, OK, well, how are they all going to fit on this roster? And that that is definitely the big question, and you know, there's more to it than just making on the roster. You got to be able to perform. There's a couple of guys that are performing out there today. the The high performers uh, were mostly on the defense. Uh, a couple of rookies, though. Brian Cook had two interceptions, nearly had a third as well. Now this is this is a passing camp, so if you're going to make plays, you got to make it in the in the passing game. And so that stood out to me. Uh, I know that it's, it's going to be feast or famine for all these rookies. They're going to have good days. They're going to have bad days. They're going to get beat, and they're going to make plays. So if you string together days of making plays, I think that starts to give you an idea of who's improving, who's getting into this defense. Likewise, Jalen well, Watson, a guy that we put behind Josh Williams and DeAndre Baker all the time, he had an interception today as well. I think that those guys are all in a fight for making the roster, and I was encouraged by that as well. Yeah, and the big thing with this camp is that now we're able to see, or at least people in the media are able to see and, and kind of get information out th as to players that are having multiple days in a row. Because OTAs to this point has just been one day a week for the media, and you don't get information enough information from the team to feel good about where they are every day that they've been having OTAs. Now you have people that are reporting what they're doing and how they're doing it and how often they're doing it. So now you have an idea – is this guy somebody that's trending doing things mm -hmm. or is it they just got up from they were able to get up for media day and they fell right back down the next day or they had two crap practices before media day and then all of a sudden they put something together and it was just a good day for them. So yeah. I, I think it's really key to be able to see if, if guys are stringing things together here. And Matt, and I talked about that when you were gone last week. I, I think it's it's key. It, that's how you get on a roll and that's how you leave minicamp on a high and that prepares you to come in a training camp. One last note, Jody Fortson had a leaping touchdown today over the middle. He's looked really good from everyone that I've spoken to that's been out of practice. So I, I know folks are giving me some static about being overly high on Jody Fortson. Um, well, it, it seems that I have plenty of reason, and he's going to keep proving well, that for me. I don't think people give him credit enough for what he did last year. I, right. I, don't, I also don't think that people understand – the kind of season he was likely to have if he was able to stay healthy. I mean, if he's able to stay healthy, he could have had, I'm not saying he gets the double digit touchdowns, but it was possible. 
he was starting to catch touchdowns. He was starting to become one of their red zone targets. Right. Uh, does he get to 10? Maybe not. Maybe he only gets to seven or eight, but that's pretty good for a guy that's never played in the NFL before. And Heck, if he had five touchdowns and 500 yards, which I think is completely plausible, that would have been a great yeah. help. Right. So, you know, uh, being high on him, and, and I and you and I have been high on him since really he came out, and, and we were hoping that he would get a chance. And then him taking the chance and being able to show what he was able to do on the field, I think was great. I cannot wait to see him on the field this year. Uh, that is something that I'm really looking forward to. I, I can't wait to see a couple of things. And uh, I think Chris Jones is ready <laughs> to have his best season as defense tackle. I had some interesting comments about what his last season looked like and what's going to look like this season. We'll get to that right after this. <laughs> Chris Jones is a little hungry to play defensive tackle. Is that what you're trying to tell me here? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. Yeah, well, if he's a little hungry, he needs to go check out Built Bar and their new flavor, Mud Pie. I actually have these. These are actually these are very very good. I like most of their bars. This flavor was delicious. You need to check it out. Not sure what mud pie tastes like. Well, if you're a chocolate <laughs> fan, you better sit down for this. The new mud pie bar is rich whipped is rich whipped cream and chocolate mousse, smothered in 100 percent real chocolate and topped with cookies and cream crumble. It is absolutely delicious. You've got to try a mud pie as soon as possible, and you need to hurry because the mud pie bar and mud pie puff are only available for a limited time. Visit Bill.com to taste the deliciousness for yourself. Mud pie, mud pie bars and puffs are available at Bilt.com right now, but they're going fast because they are delicious. Like all Built bars, they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate mousse, whipped cream, cookies and cream crumble. Stop drooling. Get to <laughs> Built.com right now to order your box of mud pie bars and puffs now. You will not regret it. They are very delicious. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCK15. And get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Boom. I'm ready. Okay. So, Chris Jones was a guy that uh, trying to get some edge rush. Well, yeah, there's always that. We were trying to get some edge rush last season. So, they're like, you know what? We're going to try it. We're going to give him a shot, get his quickness up, and go out there. It obviously wasn't the success that they had hoped for. Moved him back inside to where his natural position is, and and he started tearing it loose again. And I think we're all happy about that. The he got injured was, early in the year, and I think fighting, trying to fight through that, also hampered him as well. Agreed. Yeah, that that has a probably a more significant effect than than most of us think, to tell you the truth. But but the reason I said he's a character is because of what his quote was. So I'll let you go ahead and tell people what he said. <laughs> Wait, let me pull it up and make sure that I get this absolutely correct because um, I don't want to embellish it here. Um, as he came through, he, here's what it was is he, he was asked specifically about, you know, playing defense fan, not his, his natural position. And he said, um, uh, <laughs> he said, I, I learned one thing last season, playing defense at end is hard. <laughs> and for a guy that is so good at his position, it's rare that you hear that kind of honesty. Like I'm, I, I'm elite, I'm elite at D tackle. But I went out there and I realized just how hard it really is to play that position. But but I think that also gives you a more profound respect for guys that can go in and out. True. Because you have to realize the ability to go inside and outside or inside and outside is not going to be somebody that everybody can do. It's something everybody can do. Chris Jones is absolutely elite at defensive tackle. The problem is, is he hasn't played defensive end long enough to know the angles, to know the the different nuances of playing defensive end, being able to stop the run, being able to do all the different things that a DN needs to be able to do to do contain and all of that. Yes, he can do it at times when they do, you know, stunts, twists, whatever, and, and maybe they line him up at the end a couple of times a season, uh, you know, two or three percent of the time, maybe they line him up as, as a defensive end. I don't think there's a problem with that. The issue is, is trying to get him into where he's at 15, 20, 25 percent, 30 percent of those snaps. He is not set up for success if you do that because he does not have the – it's not that he doesn't have even the skill set or couldn't learn it. It's more of – it's a different rush technique. It's a different uh, technique with your hands. It's di- it's just all different. You're dealing with a completely different type of athlete at offensive tackle than you're dealing with at guard or center. Sure. Yeah, it makes a world of difference. And I think in the end, having – 
been able to like try that, see what it's like, and and take what you can from it. Like you said, it is a different pass rush style. You have to adjust there. But coming back inside, I think that gives him a new dimension that he can use in there. Not all the same tools, but I, I think it does help his overall pass rush ability. And for a guy that we're talking about being the second best D tackle in the league, uh, th that's nice to have you know newfound upside that maybe you weren't expecting. So uh, I think the sky is still the limit for him if he can put that together. I haven't been able to see him myself, but if he's as snappy as he was last season at his weight, I think that he's in for what could be a career year. Yeah, definitely should. And I think that you know, watching him and watching what he was able to do even late in the season last year when they really moved him back to DT when Melvin Ingram came in, mm -hmm. I think you saw he still has the dominance. He still has the ability. Once he got healthy and was able to use his hands, because a lot of people do not understand how important – your hands are two defensive linemen, especially the elite ones who are able to grab, move people with their hands. They have a strong grip. They're able to just pull them through, push them wherever they want them to go. That is a huge deal. And not being able to do that, having a hand that, that is injured or, or really having any, any injury for an elite athlete like that is going to slow you down. And it's going to make you look like you're not the same person you normally are. And, that's okay. I, it was worth the experiment that needed the help. Now they've gone and, and they've started the correction. I don't think one year is going to do it. This pass rush isn't going to get fixed this season. But by drafting Carl Loftus that you know you want to give the reps to, that you think can come along, that allows Chris to do what he does. And, and be, I think, the focal point that can help the whole defensive front. And that's probably your best bet is having your optimum guy be optimal. And I think in well, the end it's going to pay off. And he can help Carl, Carl Loftus as well. So sure. don't, I mean, don't take that – you know, take that into consideration. He can help Karloftis get single coverage with from the offensive tackle or whoever Karloftis ends up going against. I mean, he can help that aspect of it. You know, if they put him on a tight end because they want to double team Jones with a tackle on a in a guard, that helps Karloftis. I mean, it's all going to help him if he's on the same side, or you know, even even if he's on the other side, it still helps based on where you're sitting the double teams, where you're sitting the mismatches, or where you're trying to get mismatches. And what you're trying to do as an offense. So, you know, defensively, I think it's going to help Chris Jones. I think it's going to help Carl Loftus. It, it really should help Frank Clark. The bigger question isn't necessarily Chris Jones. It's who can step up, who else can step up and play that defensive tackle role that needs to be able to get pressure and make it to where they're commanding double teams as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think they'll get there. Hopefully we'll see a little bit more of it tomorrow, obviously with Frank's absence. Let's see what we can get out. Look for new releases for us from us and more information as the team releases a little bit more. Thank you all for spending your time with us. Make sure you like, sub, and hit that bell over on YouTube and get subscribed on the audio platforms. Check out Blue Nile. And also, if you would check out a survey for us, we would really appreciate the feedback. We like to give you guys an opportunity to tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to hear from us going forward. It is super simple. You can just go over to LockedOnPodcast.com slash survey and give us your take. If you do, you get entered to win a, a chance to win one of 10 $100 Ticketmaster gift cards to use as you see fit. So if you check that out, we'd appreciate it. Thank you for listening to us today. We'll talk to you tomorrow.